Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. If you are a regular, welcome back. And if you are new, hello, my name is Anna and I post videos of my manicures that I do at my salon. Um, I don't film perfect model applications, but I rather do my normal salon work and that's what I show you. I also show you how the products that I choose to use work on real clients that, you know, use and sometimes abuse their nails. And I also review products because I love trying new things. And this video is about CND shellac removal, a manicure, and an application. And the color that I chose this time is from the new fall 2019 CND collection, Treasured Moments, and the color is called First Love. All right, so I will give you a background on this manicure and I will answer some questions, some good questions that my viewers asked. So I filmed this client's manicure over a month ago and um, it's the same client and we tried the NSI Polish Pro and I really don't know if this, it was the product or what it was. At that time, the client was mentioning that she was going through a lot of stress, so that could be the culprit. Uh, because she was saying that the product kind of peeled from the ends and she kind of um, just picked it all off. So after that, we used, we went back to CND Shellac and I used Bouquet and that lasted perfectly. And after that, we used the CND um, Shellac Lobster Roll. That's what you see here me um, removing, which also, as you can see, lasted very well. And so I have no idea what happened with that product. So I will include the link to the NSI video below. And if any of you are very familiar with NSI products and with their gel polish over natural nails, I would love to hear from you. So in the comment section, please let me know if you have any ideas what happened or any clues. Okay, I would really appreciate that. So in this video, you will see me do something completely different. I went back to the most basic tools. <laughs> I didn't use any file, e-file, I used only cuticle remover and I used the ProLink. And by the way, this is not a sponsored video by any means. And I just used a regular emery board, which worked very, very well. So um, I'm actually liking the cuticle remover. So I will be kind of um, using it a little bit more in upcoming manicures and I will see how I kind of feel about it after, you know, a month or so. So let me know what you think. Let me know if you're using cuticle softeners as well. So onto the questions that my viewer had. And the question that she had was in relation to the NSI Polish Pro video, but it kind of applies to everything else. Um, she asked me if I ever cut the cuticles and if the nails need to be buffed. So about the cuticles first. So I'm not being as smart, but the cuticle word should actually be used in a singular form. Um, it's like a fish, so we say fish, not fishes, or a tissue, and we don't say tissues, right? So, or skin. So it's not skins, but it's skin. Yes, I actually didn't know about this before, but Doug Shun actually educated me on that. <laughs> so I will post the link to his information. That That is, Doug Shun is a um, very regarded scientist and a chemist. He formulates products as well and he really really knows a lot about the nail industry and the science behind it so he publishes the most updated information so i will definitely leave the link to that information below and please read it because it's it's really interesting so the cuticle turns out because there is yes there is a lot of confusion about that so the cuticle actually is the thin kind of a film of skin that stays on the nail as the nail is growing so that we have to remove from the nail before we apply any product. In order to remove it, we don't really kind of cut it. We usually put a cuticle remover on on it, and which softens the skin or that tissue, and then we kind of push it back, push it off with the manicure tool. Or also, you sometimes see me using electric file and a very, very fine, well, a fine, diamond bit and that removes that skin as well and so then we have the other skin so there was like two pieces of skin near the nail so the cuticle is we remove but we also have the proximal nail fold which a lot of people call cuticle but that's not a cuticle proximal nail fold is actually a part of living skin 
So when that living skin is cut or abraded, so like filed too much, especially, um, or just irritated, and that can be caused by even using kind of harsh, sometimes chemical solvents, things like that, it kind of hardens up and you almost get like a um, callus buildup. So cutting it and trying to kind of make it look better that way makes it actually worse. So that's how people say that, you know, once you start cutting the cuticles, which is not cuticles, it's the proximal fold, it gets worse and it really does. And then it starts to crack and then it becomes a complete mess. So in order for that skin to be nice and elastic and kind of retract back and have that elasticity, you, you need to just treat it very, very gently. So doing a manicure like I do, um, every two weeks, honestly, it gives me great results, but also clients need to understand that they need to maintain their nails and the skin around their nails by using the oil at least twice a day. So I kind of compare it to hair and that's exactly how I explain it to my clients. You cannot expect great results from your hairdresser, you know, when it comes to your hair color um, or to have a nice, smooth, healthy hair if you're using like, I don't know, a dish detergent to wash your hair, right? Like your hair is going to be a complete mess. You know, can you imagine like, or expecting good results from a facial, so going to an esthetician and getting a facial, but never using any creams on your face. Like yes, the facial is going to help, but you definitely, after a facial, you need to maintain, especially if you had an exfoliation, you need to really then protect that skin, right? So water and detergents, I find even like a hand soap are just super irritating. And if that skin is never really cared for, it kind of just becomes really, really ugly looking. So using the oil and protecting the hands from detergents and water, excess of water, does really wander to the skin around the nails. So cream, because people usually would say cream, they use cream, but probably like once every three days. But cream actually is not enough because creams are mostly water-based, which is great for the body because your body actually produces oil, like our face, but um, the hands don't produce any oil, so we need more emollient products, um, more oil-based products on the skin around the nails. So the oil that I use, um, and I actually call it nail and skin treatment, I don't call it a cuticle oil because that doesn't absolutely make any sense. That's kind of like the old-fashioned name because we remove the cuticle. The oil is not for the cuticles, the oil is for the skin around the nails and for the nails and for the product because using it on a regular basis actually protects even the the product on the nails like so either shellac or gel polish or even regular polish so the the oils that i recommend that i use and i have good results with are the daddy oil from famous names and i actually do like very much the new uh, cnd rescue rx oil the one with keratin, I don't know how the keratin kind of applied topically helps the nails, but I really do get re good results and my clients also are saying that they are seeing a difference. So sometimes it's preference. So these are my two favorite oils. So when the client comes in with hands that are super challenging and they come in for the first time, I really explain all of this. They just need to understand that coming in sometimes for one manicure it's just not going to do uh, a big difference, especially if they're not maintaining anything when it comes to their nails. So, you know, when they kind of hope for me to do some kind of a magic, I think it's a, it's a very unrealistic expectation. And we have to be kind of honest with clients as well about that, right? So yeah, educating the client is very, very important. And from my experience, the way I explain it, it really works. Still, not every client maybe uses the oil, but they kind of get the idea and they don't expect me to then do all the work, right? Okay, so um, the question number two, or the second part of the question, uh, do nails need to be buffed? So yes, for some brands, um, yes, they need to be buffed. For shellac, they don't. But when I buff for other brands, I usually buff just once, and I buff with the buffer, not a file. And then after removal of the product, I buff just the regrowth. And sometimes you see me, probably in the older videos, they kind of go over the whole nail, but it's not again to buff the whole surface. It's just to catch the little, the little flaky sometimes, or the little 
uh, pieces that stick up. Sometimes it's a piece of base coat or something because if the nail is not completely smooth, the polish then is going to catch and just create these little bumpy areas. So very, very gently because the purpose of the buffing is to remove the shine and not to just buff. So when I did the um, NSI Polish uh, Pro application, the nail was not shiny anymore because I removed another product so the nails were buffed underneath. So I didn't buff again. And the cuticle was removed with the electric file and the diamond bit. And when you do that, that excess of shine, whatever is kind of probably gone as well. So the viewer also asked me if the white in the sidewalls was it dust or just dehydration so i kind of went back to the video and i'm not seeing any white that she's talking about especially after i wiped the nails with a cleanser but if you see any white that's not really dust anymore because i scrub really really well and i also don't forget the sidewalls so what you might see is just yes the dehydration from the acetone or the alcohol which are temporary and one more thing that I wanted to kind of mention because um, I just changed something. So it's about comments. First of all, I love comments because they, they let me know that my videos are reaching people and they're helping people. And they also give me ideas. They, they guide me on what to do kind of next. So this channel I kind of created so people can see how real salon work looks like. And people come in, it's my clients, they come in with, you know, imperfect nails, and I'm showing you how I try to make them, and I hope I do, make them look better. So this is real work, this is not like, you know, magazine work or anything like that. So I, I love the comments because they, like I said, they gave me guidance on what to cover and what is needed and what people find challenging. And I also just like having conversation with people and brainstorming sometimes and like, you know, in for example, with the white spots, just figuring out things and the feedback really, really helps. But as you might notice, I actually started moderating comments just recently because I'm just trying to keep this place very professional, positive and, you know, encouraging and also honest, but just good. And I do, not often, but I do come sometimes comments that are just really unnecessary, okay? So, you know, I have comments like these hands are ugly or this color doesn't go with the person's skin or whatever. And they're not helpful whatsoever because, again, I film manicures with my regular paying clients. And just let's not forget, these are, these clients are like kind enough to allow me to do these videos. So let's not take it for granted and I would never want my clients to kind of see that side of the, you know, community, definitely. So, um, and also, you know, when people choose colors, it's like, that's what my client chose. Like, I, I really don't understand why someone feels that they need to comment on that because kind of my theory about opinions is this. I always look at real life and if I would do something like that in real life. So when I walk through a mall or a store or something and I see, for example, a store with clothes that I don't like, I just keep walking, right? I might think that like, wow, this is kind of ugly or like that doesn't really go or whatever, but it's just I don't go into the store and just announce loudly for everyone in the store to hear that I don't like it. Like, that's crazy, right? But that's what people do online and it just kind of blows my mind that, I don't know, that people think it's okay because it's it's not. Like, yes, it's you can have your own opinion, but sometimes, I don't know, do it in private, right? So yes, if I'm walking, let's say, with a friend of mine, I might make a comment, like, yeah, I don't like it, but it's just, I just keep walking. Um, I see a lot of stuff on, stuff on Instagram I don't like, but I just keep scrolling, right? Because I kind of think, and I don't think it's fake, it's just that the way I see it is that people are showing off what they offer. Because I follow a lot of salons. So they're just showing people what they offer, and they're showing their real work. 
if I don't like something, I don't say anything because it's nobody really asked my opinion, right? Um, so if I see something really, really good, I'll stop and say, you know what, I think this is amazing. If I see something that's super dangerous, I might privately, you know, of course, if it's super dangerous, I'll report it to Instagram or something. Or if it's just something bordering or whatever, I just would private message someone. But like, I'm not gonna make a scene and, and kind of announce everything that goes through my head, right? Is it fake? Um, I don't think so. Because if someone, for example, is standing in front of that store and is asking for opinions, so they have, you know, I don't know, they're holding two pieces of clothing and they're like, okay, we're asking everybody who's walking past, what do they think? Yeah, and then if someone really is asking me what I think about something, then I absolutely will give you my honest opinion without sugar coating. But again, kind of like more privately, right? Because I'm just talking to that person. I'm just not walking to the whole store announcing it to everyone. So if someone is asking me, even when it comes to nails, Anna, what do you think about this set? Like, what would you improve? I would say, you know, I think the color looks, again, in private, right? I would say, you know, I think the color looks a little lumpy. Or, you know, I think this is flooding the skin. I don't know. Like, if they're asking my opinion, because if they're not asking my opinion, I'm not going to say anything. I just, I don't know. I wanted to have a clean and useful comment section because I don't know about you, but I do love reading comments. And it's funny how that's kind of becomes like this second life of a channel or sometimes even, well, it's usually on the YouTube channels. Like, it's the comment section. Um, I love going through the comment section and kind of seeing what people's opinions are, I guess, or what they think, or I don't know. It's just sometimes it's just a good addition to the to the channel. But recently, I was um, scrolling through this comment section of this makeup channel that I follow, and oh my god, the drama and uh, I don't know, mean people. I I well, I can't believe it, but. What I find surprising is that the person who runs the channel is actually a very kind person and she responds very kindly. So I don't understand where even this negativity comes from, but I guess because of all the kind of really inappropriate comments and bickering and just actually even name calling, like I just don't even want to comment on that channel and it kind of left a bad taste in my mouth so i kind of that made me really really think so i don't know do we sometimes give people platform to just being inappropriate i don't know but that kind of made me think and made me really appreciate the channels that are very very positive again it's not for sugar coating but it's just for being encouraging and positive and and sharing something that will help others and not to tear them down you know what i mean so yes you can challenge my techniques and you can have opinions but you can do all this kindly and i don't think it's me just being too sensitive or not being able to take criticism because like i said everything can be done with kindness so instead of saying a metal file can never be used on any else that's not really helpful and it's not really adding to the conversation. I don't think it's true, but you know, it's, I don't even want to respond to this because the person is not even asking a question and me adding to this conversation is pointless because the person already has certain belief. So what's the point? Um, but if really that person wants to talk, then saying hi, Anna, you know, or I never thought about or believed that a metal file can be used on a natural nails. Um, obviously, you think otherwise, like, what's your experience, you know, like, that's a very, very different kind of a statement or a question that challenges my technique, which is okay, but it's, then it gives me the opportunity to kind of explain my side of the story. It gives both of us a chance to talk and educate each other and maybe kind of dig deeper for certain answers you know what i mean okay so this is it about this video i will play some relaxing music for you so you can relax and watch the rest of the video and if you have any questions i'm available for one-on-one -on -one coaching you can always get hold of me and i actually have online booking for that now so i will give you the link to my online booking in the description box and also in the comment section so if you're interested in talking to me or you have some questions that I don't cover, but they're related to what I do, um, 
definitely we can talk. So if you find this video helpful, please hit a like and subscribe and also hit the notification bell so YouTube lets you know that I uploaded a video and I will see you soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.